Kevin Hart. Now, you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yeah. Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. I do his um, podcast. Yes. And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. For your 60th birthday, was there a big, like... I'm not 60 yet, Kev. When, when is it? When is I, that? I just turned 58. Just turned 58. So it's kind of, well, basically you're 60. But at the same time, like I said, and me, you know, I'm 56 years old. Damn! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Word on the street is that Don Cheadle and Dr. Dre are throwing some shade at Kevin Hart, claiming he's not just a Hollywood player, but also doubles as a behind the scenes operator, if you catch my drift. So what exactly is going on? For context, in 2021, Kevin Hart and Don Cheadle were engaged in a discussion about age and the meaning of damn in a now viral clip from Peacock's Heart to Heart. The series Heart to Heart had been promoted as an unplanned, unscripted, unfiltered talk show. And just one week after its release, a portion of it had garnered significant attention. Earlier that week, a viewer shared a clip from the Peacock series on Twitter that showcased what seemed to be an amusing exchange between Hart and guest Don Cheadle. The moment arose when Cheadle mentioned his age. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Despite Hart's attempt to apologize, Cheadle's demeanor remained unimpressed. Just understand, I did not mean it the way it came out, Hart insisted. We'll take a poll on how you meant it with people here later, after the show's over, Cheadle retorted. The conversation then evolved into a playful debate as they attempted to decipher the exact nature of Hart's damn. Cheadle pointed out that the subsequent damn Hart uttered as he tried to clarify himself differed from the initial one. As Cheadle plainly stated, these were two different dams. The clip quickly gained traction, being shared more than 20,000 times and accumulating over 70,000 likes. Despite the comedic nature of the exchange, some viewers interpreted it as a subtle form of mockery from Hart towards Cheadle. He looked like the words actually hit him in the face, one observer commented on Cheadle's reaction. Another viewer tweeted, It was so uncomfortable to watch. While the interaction with Cheadle was undoubtedly contentious, this next incident took offense to a new level. Adding to the mounting drama, Kevin engaged in a light spat with none other than Dr. Dre, the legendary artist responsible for shaping the careers of countless musicians and his involvement in various high-profile business ventures. Kevin had the guts to accuse Dre of false age, making him older than he already is. I'm, I'm knocking on 60 doors. You're door. knocking on 60 doors. As if that's not enough, Kevin also invited Will Ferrell onto his show, only to insinuate that their collaboration should be carried out soon as Will's time on Earth was limited. This audacious remark not only raised eyebrows, but also ignited a firestorm of criticism, leaving many to wonder how far Hart is willing to push the boundaries of comedy at the expense of his esteemed colleagues. I hope we do work again, Will, because I don't know how much time you got left. Um, and I would, you know, I would love I, for us I, to I, do oh. something before it's too late, man. Kevin's remarks struck such a nerve that they left Will momentarily speechless. But Will eventually mustered the courage to confront Kevin about his alleged inside knowledge of a life-threatening disease that even Will himself hadn't been unaware of. Is there something you know about me that I don't know? Like medical health history? Fans believe that Kevin was flabbergasted due to Will's round ballish response. What an amazing response to a proverbial jab taken at him. He didn't block, he didn't counter, he just weaved. He did it so beautifully that it even threw off the attacker. It made Kevin break. However, others believe that Kevin is just playing out his character. Man, the comedic chemistry between the two is amazing to watch. How quick they are to keep building off of each other's jokes and how Kevin wanted to keep it going, but broke character because Will is just too funny. Adding to the mounting drama, Drama, Kevin engaged in a light spat with none other than Dr. Dre, the legendary artist responsible for shaping the careers of countless musicians and his involvement in various high-profile business ventures. Kevin had the guts to accuse Dre of false age, making him older than he already is. I'm, I'm knocking on 60 doors. You're door. knocking on 60 doors. In any case, more recently, actor and comedian Monique also spoke about how Kevin Hart is allegedly a Hollywood plant who thrives at mocking comedians in need. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll execute to produce, I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol. Monique prefaced her comments about Hart by admitting that he wrote a check to support her when she was down bad and that she would be forever grateful for it, though she made a point to say that she paid it back with interest. When the actress was a guest on Hart's podcast, Comedy Gold Mines, in 2021, he introduced her as an auntie, a mama, a spirit, and called her Mama Mo. 
She spoke on the podcast about Oprah Perry and Precious director Lee Daniels, who had not yet publicly apologized to her. Hart said he'd reach out to Perry to coordinate squashing the beef, to which Perry was allegedly not amenable. But she said Hart promised her he would execute produce and partner with her on whatever she was working on, which excited her because she and Hicks were working on a talk show deal. Hart's manager Dave Becky allegedly told Monique's production company that Hart wanted nothing to do with her. I called Kevin Hart immediately and told him, they said you didn't want to work with me, she said. He said, it's just a miscommunication. We're going to talk Tuesday. That was two years ago. I've never talked to Kevin Hart again. That's what we're faced with. You allow someone to come between your relationship with a woman you said was like your mother. The Hearts and Perrys aside, at one point, the Oscar-winning actress had a few words for The Breakfast Club. The tension between Monique and The Breakfast Club played out during a contentious 2018 interview on the Power 105.1 radio program. Earlier that year, Charlemagne the God gave the comedian the donkey of the day for promoting a boycott of Netflix over racial and gender bias. And then you give me a title of donkey of the day. Is your mother still alive? Yes, ma'am. And you're from what city in South Carolina? Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Monk's Corner. And if I was to call your mother or your grandmother, could they tell me stories of inequality? People were having call-ins when I said, this is not right. I was donkey of the day. Remember that? Monique asked Shannon Sharp on the Club Shay Shay podcast. Mo also said, the breakfast nubs called me the donkey of the day. That's what they said. And they had a whole call-in about how I was the donkey of the day. But you didn't do the same thing when you found out we settled. We gave Monique big love when the Netflix special happened, Charlemagne the God stated on the latest edition of The Breakfast Club. He also added, and I said, you know what? That's why I need to mind my damn business when it comes to other people's business. In June 2022, then co-host Angela Yee covered Monique's finalized legal agreement with Netflix on The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God asked about the details of the settlement, but he did not comment further on the situation during that particular rumor report segment. Now, the weird thing about this is that Monique isn't the the first person to expose Kevin Hart for allegedly being a power slave. You see, just over a month ago, Cat Williams sat on the same seat on Club Shay Shay podcast talking about Kevin Hart. Williams began by highlighting the astonishing trajectory of Kevin Hart's career in Hollywood by first questioning the unprecedented speed with which Hart achieved success. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. Williams went on and suggested that Hart's rapid ascent was unusual and posed the question of whether Hart had truly paid his dues in the competitive world of stand-up comedy. The comedian emphasized the significance of the journey and questioned whether Hart's seemingly instant success was indicative of a different narrative. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A. he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading, no. In the interview, Cat Williams introduced the term plant to describe someone who seemingly appears out of nowhere and attains success without the traditional struggles that comedians often face and then claims they are self-made. Williams then drew attention to the fact that Kevin Hart's documentary with Chris Rock revealed his comedy roots on the East Coast. He pointed to a perceived contradiction in Hart's narrative, noting, he just did his documentary with Chris Rock, where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. Williams probed into the inconsistencies in Hart's story, challenging the widely accepted narrative of an overnight success. In any case, Kevin Hart also once addressed the rumors of his overnight success. In 2014, Kevin Hart sat down with Oprah for an interview on Oprah Prime, where he delved into the intricacies of his skyrocketing career and the harsh realities of finding success in Hollywood. Hollywood has a way of making everything seem like an overnight success, Hart explained during the interview, but I've had 18 years in the business. I put in my time. I got dues that have been paid and paid again and paid one more time after that. I stayed true to my dreams and eventually they came true. Oprah pointed out the countless hardworking individuals striving to break into the industry and achieve success. She probed Hart on why he was able to do it while so many others faced insurmountable challenges. The difference in me is that I paid attention to what people did before me. Whether it was right or wrong, Hart reflected, everybody that's successful lays a blueprint out. Not only did Hart pay attention, but even back in 2014, 
2018, he surrounded himself with tangible reminders of those who paved the way for him, from Eddie Murphy to Chris Rock to Richard Pryor. The walls of his home adorned with pictures and paintings of comedians, he considered mentors served as daily inspiration. I come down these steps every day, I look at Richard, he was great, I see Eddie, he was great, I see Chris Rock, he was great, heart shared. It's a constant reminder, what am I trying to achieve? I want to be great. This unwavering motivation, as Hart expressed in the interview, was his belief in what set him apart in Hollywood. What separates me is my drive, he stated. My drive is other people's success. Anyway, Cat Williams didn't stop at questioning Kevin Hart's rapid rise. He also delved into the dynamics of Hollywood gatekeepers. Williams challenged the notion that there are no gatekeepers in the entertainment industry, asserting that he has observed individuals controlling access to opportunities. He used the example of Kevin Hart supposedly letting Tiffany Haddish in into the industry, raising the question of whether gatekeepers do indeed exist. They tell you that there's no gatekeepers, but we keep seeing the same people open the gate. Didn't Kevin open the gate and let Tiffany in? Ain't he now opening it up? Don't such and such open the gate? Cat Williams also addressed the issue of comedic standards during the interview. He explained that his refusal to compromise on certain content, specifically avoiding overtly homophobic themes had led to him losing out on opportunities. Williams argued that he wasn't against humor, but advocated for a more thoughtful and considerate approach to comedy that didn't rely on outdated and potentially offensive tropes. You see, Cat has a long history of calling out Hollywood elites and their shady ways of controlling black celebrities. In a 2013 interview with Black Tree TV, while discussing his role in Scary Movie 5, Cat delved into some interesting topics, including a theory about black actors being forced to wear dresses on screen in order to progress to the next level of fame. It's worth noting that this interview came out not long after Kevin Hart appeared on an SNL skit wearing a dress. For context, it all started when Dave Chappelle, another revered comedian, appeared on Oprah's show in 2006, where he talked openly about his refusal to accept a $50 million deal from Comedy Central. He felt that such deals came with strings attached, and he was unwilling to be controlled or humiliated for the sake of a paycheck. Chappelle's revelations didn't end there. He recounted being asked to wear a dress for a movie scene, an experience that left him deeply uncomfortable. According to him, many comedians had faced similar situations, having to don dresses on screen, and it often coincided with a critical juncture in their careers. This, too, was a nod to the prevailing industry belief that black entertainers needed to cross this peculiar threshold to advance. Fast forward to 2012, when Kevin Hart was asked about Dave Chappelle's claims during a radio show. While he didn't explicitly say no to ever wearing a dress, Hart emphasized the importance of personal boundaries. He stated that crossing these boundaries was non-negotiable for him. You have to have, you have to have boundaries, you have to have limits that you refuse to cross. He even cited examples of bizarre requests he had received, such as dribbling a basketball on a talk show, which he politely declined. Hart stressed the importance of protecting his brand and the potential risks of compromising it. However, just a year later, Hart appeared in an SNL skit where he donned a dress, a move that drew sharp criticism from fans. Some accused him of being a sellout, arguing that he had contradicted his earlier stance. The skit portrayed him as a nine-year-old child pope, an image that many believe didn't align with the Kevin Hart they had come to know. The new Pope is not Turkson. The new Pope is nine-year-old Oscar nominee, Kevin Wallace. Cat Williams seized this opportunity to reignite the feud. He suggested that Kevin Hart's actions on SNL were merely part of a larger pattern, insinuating that Hart was willingly playing by the industry's rules to secure fame and fortune. Williams opined that Hart's success allowed him to escape criticism for wearing a dress, as a long line of comedians had already done so before him. At the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are gonna say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. He pointed to movies like Big Mama's House and the Medea franchise as examples of previous instances where comedians had donned dresses. Williams didn't go all out in his attack on Hart. Instead, he subtly questioned the choices made by comedians who aimed for mainstream success. He hinted that some entertainers, including himself and Dave Chappelle, were willing to go against the grain and, as a result, might never attain the same level of fame as Hart. The feud took a heated turn when Kevin Hart fed 
fed up with Williams' insinuations, unleashed his frustration during an appearance on The Breakfast Club radio show. Hart hit back hard, accusing Cat Williams of dodging responsibility for his actions, particularly his issues with the law and substance abuse. He argued that Williams had squandered opportunities and positioned himself as a risk to studios, which eventually led to a decline in his career. Hart wasn't mincing words. He laid the blame squarely on Williams' choices. Hart emphasized that he had worked diligently to achieve success and hadn't compromised his principles. He pointed to Williams' own issues, implying that Williams was trying to deflect blame by attacking him. According to Hart, comedy was a serious business, and those who succeeded did so through hard work and dedication, not by succumbing to industry pressures. At its core, this feud became a clash of values and principles. Cat Williams seemed to represent a group of comedians who believed in staying true to their art and resisting any attempts at conformity, even if it meant staying on the fringes of the industry. On the other hand, Kevin Hart was seen as someone who had navigated the mainstream with remarkable success, but was not willing to compromise his values or image. Williams implied that comedians like him and Dave Chappelle couldn't reach the same level of success as Kevin Hart because they refused to bow to the industry's whims. He suggested that they might have been pushed to do things they were uncomfortable with for the sake of fame. The message was clear. There were boundaries and crossing them came at a price. In any case, one of the reasons why Cat has always had it for Hart is because Cat, he believed that the industry saw an opportunity to replace him with his fellow comedian Kevin Hart, but he didn't blame Hart for the situation. According to Vibe, the prolific comedian claimed Hart was a puppet being strung along by powers greater than himself. But Williams also asserted in his mind, Hart being a puppet wasn't his fault, while comparing himself to the true story star. We don't get mad, just because I'm better than some black dudes doesn't mean I'm better than no black dudes, Hart said. I'm saying if you want to be mad at Kermit the Frog, don't be mad at Kermit the Frog, be mad at Jim Henson. Don't say F Donald Duck when you really mean F Walt Disney. But Williams also shared he had nothing against Hart at the time, despite his feelings towards him. I don't care nothing about that happens to Kevin Hart. I just wish him the best. I just know that that somebody's hand is stuck up that baby, you understand? Oh, we're a puppet show, boo boo. Please believe Believe it, he continued. In a separate interview with Rover Radio, Williams addressed the conspiracy that Kevin Hart might be behind his controversies. Williams was asked if his scandals were a ploy to tear Williams down to put Hart in his former spot. But although Williams shrugged off the conspiracy, he did believe Hart was set up as a possible replacement. The fault wasn't Hart's, however. The real truth of the matter is that I already knew what the situation was, and I had already stepped to the side at the point, Williams said of his comedic career. In the industry, as it was, in that small realm, was wondering what's going to happen with comedy. So, I helped in the blueprint to create a Kevin Hart to fill that vacuum. Williams further elaborated that Hart couldn't affect his career because at the time, he had no real power. He doesn't have any power at all. There are no powerful puppets in puppet land. Not that the person is bad because they're a puppet, but they're not making their own decisions. Their decisions are being made by a corporation. And so, it's that corporation that I have issue with, Williams shared. Williams also brought up a theory that corporations corporations don't care for Hart all that much. In fact, they might view Hart the same way that they view Williams. If you like somebody, you're not going to let somebody do 12 movies in the course of 12 months. Williams said, you could have broke 12 movies up in four years and given somebody a wonderful extended period of time in their craft, instead of giving somebody 12 movies in 12 months. That sounds like you hate that person. Although the comedian had some choice words for Hart at the time, eventually Williams would apologize for his remarks. Stopping by V103 Atlanta, the comedian took the time to address the situation with Hart. I should have never mentioned Kevin Hart's name, Williams said. That is the reigning king of comedy if you ask for popular consensus. Williams would further allow elaborate on the motivations behind his apology. The fact that I, while being on stage pretending to be higher than that, would then stoop down to the same level and try to embarrass Kevin Hart in front of his children and loved ones after all the hard work he did since 2002 is just regrettable on my part. So I humbly apologize, Williams shared. Cat Williams has built his career from the ground up. Born in Cincinnati, Ohio, Williams spent much of his time in Dayton growing up. He started performing at comedy shows when he was underaged, spending years developing his craft while expanding his brand. His career took off in 2002, where he joined Nick Cannon's Wild and Out comedy sketch show. His profile further increased by featuring in 2002's Friday After Next. By 2006, he starred in his first stand-up special, Cat Williams Live, Let a Play a Play. From there, his legend grew into what it is today. In any case, Cat Williams' career has experienced much controversy. He's been involved with some high-profile feuds with other celebrities for speaking his mind. But apart from this ongoing 
celebrity drama, Williams has found himself in numerous trouble with the law in the years following his success. From punching a pool supply guy to getting into a physical altercation with a 17-year-old, Williams has found himself featured on the news frequently. Although he has 19 felonies, he's never been convicted. His lack of filter and his frequent troubles with the law caused speculation among his fan base. Theories emerged that Williams wasn't as successful as he could have been because he truly was blackballed in the entertainment industry. Recently, however, Williams decided to address the myth and verify it as fact or fiction. In an interview with Hot 97, the comedian reveals that he hasn't been blackballed by the industry. Contrary to the opinions of some fans, Williams isn't concerned with being mainstream. He's simply more interested in doing things his way. My fans think like, oh, he's been blackballed, Williams said. Williams believes one of the reasons why his fans think this way is because he doesn't do commercials or sponsorships. After addressing the matter, however, Williams was quick to dispel the myth. But the truth is, in 20 years, I've never been in a commercial audition in my life. Like, I never let my tour get sponsored when I was broke or now, Williams said. You can't buy me, not because I'm not for sale. You can't buy me because I'm not in the store. That's different. Williams may not need mainstream acceptance, but at one point mainstream accepted him. In addition to being one of the most successful comedians of his time, Williams added an Emmy to his resume. He earned the Primetime Award for his role in Atlanta, created by Donald Glover. Williams appreciates the Emmy win, but he was clear that the Emmy's significance isn't necessarily about him. The Emmy really didn't mean that much to me. It just meant something to me because on our side of the war, coming in, we have to agree that we're not going to win any awards, Williams said. So anytime there's a breakthrough and we do, it's monumental. Williams later clarified his remarks on winning the Emmy. He said, why did he win the Emmy though? He won the Emmy because what that guy was saying is what they've been wanting that guy to say. They wanted to see that guy like that. That's how they wanted to see him in a dirty wife beater, in an old robe. And we wanted him to apologize and say, I'm sorry. That's what we would like. Nonetheless, there have been claims that suggest Kevin Hart's ascent to stardom was primarily driven by effective marketing and promotional strategies rather than his intrinsic comedic talent. To thoroughly examine this assertion, we must acknowledge that marketing and promotion have always been pivotal in the entertainment industry. Hollywood, in particular, is an industry where talent alone is not always sufficient to guarantee success. The ability to market and promote oneself effectively often serves as the differentiating factor between obscurity and stardom. This reality is especially pronounced in the realm of comedy, where numerous exceptionally talented comedians vie for limited opportunities on stage and screen. In any case, with a clique of industry veterans boldly stepping up to challenge these Tinseltown elites, whispers suggest that we might be on the brink of a seismic shakeup in the shadowy world of Hollywood. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.